Good afternoon. Thank you all for joining us this afternoon. We really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to join us in the CDFI support in mitigating cure notice. This is a live event and we will appreciate any questions that you care to ask. And we certainly do thank you. My name is Catherine Baxter. I'm your moderator for today's event. I'm going to turn the console over to Christy Kubista Hovis, who is the resource director for the Office of Credit Union Resources and Expansion. There, I wanna let everyone know, first of all, there's a Q&A tab to your right in the lower right-hand corner of your screen. So when you have a question that you wanna ask, please use that button. But right now, I'd like to turn it over to our resources direct director, Christy Kubista Hovis. Christy, we have your attention, or rather, you have our attention. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. Well, first of all, I just want to say thank you for all of you to all of you who are here today with us. I know this is a very important issue for all of you on the call right now. And I really want to say thank you to Marcy Myers, who's from the CDFI fund, who's come here to help personally deal with and help talk through how to help mitigate and how to help resolve some of these care notices. So I this I know this is very pointed targeted uh, webinar and we're hoping that we'll, it will you'll all have some successful resolutions um, as outcomes to those care, those care notices. But uh, I do want to stress that we will be answering any and all questions if, if you type them in. Uh, but first we'll have about a 30 minute presentation from Marcy and then a Q&A piece. So thank you and Marcy, you can take it from there. Great, thanks Christine and Catherine. Uh, good day everyone. My name is Marcy Meyer, as Christy said, and I'm the Associate Program Manager with the Office of Certification Policy and Evaluation, or OCPE, at the Community Development Financial Institutions Fund. The manager of OCPE, Michelle Dickens, may also join the session a little bit later. She's, uh, her schedule's a little tight, so she might not be able to do that. Before I jump into um, providing the overview information that we'd like to present, um, the CDFI Fund just wants to thank the National Credit Union Administration for hosting this session and giving us all an opportunity to talk about the recent CDFI certification cure notices you all have been receiving. And we also want to thank all of you, the credit unions that are participating today as well. So as I mentioned, we're gonna start, as I and Christy mentioned actually, we're gonna start by providing some overview information. And then after that, we'll be taking your questions. So you may be wondering what's up with this barrage of CDFI certification related cure notifications that the CDFI fund has been sending out. And you may think that we've identified these issues in a vacuum. That is far from the truth. For years, the CDFI fund certification team has been short staffed. Now that we're uh, almost fully staffed, we're better positioned to push through the review of annual certification and data collection reports that had not yet been finalized and or related target market modification requests. Um, and these reviews are currently being prioritized given that we now have the staff to help out with them because of the need on the CDFI fund side to close certain CDFI certification application and reporting processes, including the target market modification request process, excuse me. And that's all being closed down because we're gonna be transitioning to new CDFI certification policies and procedures. The CDFI fund needs to ensure in the meantime that organizations for which we have not been able to reaffirm compliance with the CDFI certification requirements can be confirmed as meeting all those requirements during the transition period. Um, again, during this transition period when some of the cure pathways that would normally have been available will not be available because of the transition that we're going through. So we understand you might be frustrated by the fact that your entity CDFI certification has been put into a cure. We'd like to note that in most cases, issues um, that resulted in the current CDFI certification cure status were identified by the certified entity itself. In addition, in many cases, an issue has been a problem for several years. As you may be aware, it is a certified entity's responsibility to maintain compliance with the CDFI certification requirements. So as soon as a CDFI certification issue arises, an entity should be taking the steps necessary to resolve that issue. 
even if the CDFI fund has not confirmed a problem or directed the entity on how to proceed. We recognize that many of you have done this by proactively submitting target market modification requests or other relevant documents to show that there really was no issue or that a problem has or can be resolved, um, but that it has taken the CDFI fund a while to review those submissions. We apologize for the delay on that. We'd like to remind you that as you work to resolve your entity's cure status, it will be important to remember that we are operating under the existing CDFI certification policies and that you must provide information as needed per those current policies and procedures. Indicating that the CDFI certification policies and procedures will be changing is not a valid explanation for not providing information required to demonstrate compliance with the current CDFI certification requirements. So for this overview, we're gonna review how to understand the generalized CDFI certification cure notices and the reasons a pending target market modification request will be declined. And as time permits, we'll also talk about how to identify the specific CDFI certification requirements that need to be addressed by your entity as part of the cure process as well as how to submit information to resolve the CDFI certification cure status. After the overview, again, we'll be opening it up for questions. Now, if we can't get to everything as part of this overview today, because we really do wanna make sure there's plenty of time for you all to ask your questions, um, don't worry. Some of the information that we won't be able to cover today, um, you'll be able to access in other, via other means. Um, one of the things that the CDFI fund is um, preparing to do is to post uh, FAQs with all of this type of information at our public website. So you should be able to see this information that we'll talk about today and even information that we don't get to today in those FAQs at our public website. So let's start with understanding the generalized CDFI certification cure notifications. When information collected by the CDFI fund in connection with an ACR or by other means, such as a material events notice or a help request, indicates that an entity has not been meeting one or more of the CDFI certification requirements and or the available information is just not sufficient for the CDFI fund to be able to affirm that an entity is currently compliant with all CDFI certification requirements the entity's CDFI certification is placed in a cure status. Now, typically, the cure status is implemented by way of an annual certification and data collection report, an ACR, and an entity is notified of the specific issues involved, as well as the time frame within which any issues will need to be resolved. The mechanical steps that need to be taken um, in a, the CDFI Fund's online AMOS system in order to place an organization's CDFI certification into a formal cure can take some time, primarily because we have to enter a bunch of instructions into each relevant ACR. Since we did not have the luxury of time in this uh, instance, the CDFI Fund chose to use a blanket generalized cure notification process. The ACRs relevant to the current cure status will generally be the ones for which the review has not yet been finalized. CDFIs can view all submitted ACRs by report year, as well as um, they, they will also be able to see the status of each report in their account in the CDFI Fund's online AMOS portal. If a cure status has not yet been implemented via an entity's most recently submitted ACR, it will be soon, likely within the next seven business days. Some entities that received a CDFI certification cure notice, one of the recent ones, have already submitted target market modification requests in an effort to correct self-identified uh, compliance issues and have not yet received a formal determination on those target market modification requests from the CDFI fund. But for those of you who are um, going to be getting the, the or need to, um, I'm trying to figure out how to explain this, those of you who actually need to proceed in the CURE process, the CDFI fund already knows that those target market modification requests will be declined. We're gonna go into a little bit more detail about that in a moment, um, but just be aware that if you've submitted a target market modification request, in most cases, 
um, that target market modification request is going to be declined, and you'll need to do something else, perhaps submit a new target market modification request to uh, correct any cure-related issues. <clears throat> Again, to help everyone um, better understand the generalized CDFI certification cure notices, we're going to provide some overview information on, the, uh, on what's been presented in those notices, and after that, as time permits, we'll provide some other information about um, the, the cure status. Um, so just jumping into um, the, the way that you should be reviewing the generalized CDFI certification cure notice that you received. First off, where a generalized CDFI certification cure notice states that your entity has been identified as having one or more of a set of specific CDFI certification issues, the notification actually lists most of the reasons the CDFI fund could not affirm compliance with CDFI certification requirements for any entity to which the notice was sent. That means that your entity might not have all of those issues. In the section of the notice that talks about how an entity can demonstrate its adherence to the CDFI certification requirements, the CDFI fund indicates what an entity with a certain type of issue will need to do to demonstrate that there really was no issue or that a problem has or can be resolved. The notices also provide some general information on the CDFI certification requirements that entities should consider as they review their CDFI certification status and attempt to demonstrate their compliance with pertinent requirements. And finally, the notice identifies a deadline by which the cure must be effected. As we have set cure deadlines in notices and then sent new notices, extending those deadlines, we expect that there may be some confusion about what your entity's cure due date is. Um, the current CDFI certification cure due dates that supersede any other deadline your entity may have been notified about are as follows. For CDFIs that received a general CDFI certification cure notification dated June 2022, the cure deadline is September 30th, 2022. For CDFIs that received a general CDFI certification cure notification dated either July 2022 or August 22, but they did not receive one dated June 2022, the cure deadline will be October 23rd, 2022. So now let's talk about the different types of CDFI certification issues identified in these generalized CDFI certification cure notices. First off, the cure notices were sent to a variety of different types of um, CDFIs. Um, so we mentioned in the cure notice uh, financing entity related issues. Federal or state regulated credit unions are automatically accepted as meeting the financing entity criterion, so credit unions can ignore the reference in the CDFI certification cure notice about financing entity issues. For target market, quite a few credit unions received the CDFI certification cure notice because the CDFI fund could not affirm compliance with the target market requirements. The target market issues identified in the generalized CDFI certification cure notices include the fact that the level of financial product activity that can be counted as target market directed is too low for the entity to be accepted as meeting the CDFI certification target market benchmark requirements. Remember, for ACR reporting only, transactions closed in connection with the Federal Paycheck Protection Program excuse me, the PPP, can be counted towards meeting the CDFI certification target market benchmark requirements, even if they were not directed to an entity's current approved CDFI certification target market, as long as those PPP transactions were directed to what the CDFI fund refers to as eligible markets. You can find out more about eligible markets in ACR-related guidance posted at the CDFI fund's public website. So for this um, level of financial, of target market directed financial product activity issue, if the level of an entity's financial product target market activity that can be counted as target market directed does not meet the, C the standard 60% threshold 
on either the number or dollar volume side, and you probably know that the CDFI funds target market benchmark requirements say that at least 60% of both the number and dollar volume of financial product transactions must be directed to an approved target market. Um, if your entity is not meeting that standard 60% level on either the number or the dollar volume side, an exception to meeting those standard benchmarks may be requested. Generally, in order for the CDFI fund to use its discretion, which we don't always do, but in order for us to be able to do that to make an exception, generally an entity must be well over 60%, usually at or above 70% for either the number or dollar volume of target market directed activity, and not too far below 60%, usually no lower than 55% on the other side. In addition, an explanation of why the entity is missing the standard 60% uh, financial product target market activity benchmarks must be provided and the CDFI fund must deem the issue to be one for which an exception should be granted. Another target market related issue identified in the general CDFI certification cure notices is that an entity's current approved CDFI certification target market includes a customized investment area that was created based on the 2010 ACS data set and that is not or may not be valid under the current 2015 ACS data set. So a customized investment area is an investment area that includes both qualified and non-qualified census tracts or counties and that specially validates in the CDFI funds SIMS mapping system as a distressed area overall. For customized investment areas created under the 2010 census data set to still be valid, they must be exactly recreatable in SIMS under the new census data set and must also still validate as a distressed area under the new census data set. This particular issue is one that should have been corrected back in 2019, no later than 2020, when the CDFI fund transitioned to the current 2015 ACS data. Some entities were placed into a cure simply to validate a customized investment area. They may have had no other issues. They may not have indicated that they knew that their customized investment area was no longer valid, but we put them into a cure erring on the side of caution um, for this particular batch of cures to ensure that they did check to make sure that that customized investment area is still valid. Another target market related issue identified in the generalized CDFI certification cure notices is that an entity reported on its target market benchmark compliance using one or more markets that are not part of its current approved CDFI certification target market. To verify its current approved CDFI certification target market, an entity can go to the target market section of its account in the CDFI funds online AMOS portal, or it can review a CDFI certification application determination letter or subsequent target market modification request determination letter that it received from the CDFI fund. Again, for um, reporting on target market compliance in the ACR, you need to use your current approved CDFI certification target market. The general CDFI certification cure notice also indicates that accountability might be an issue for some entities. To meet the CDFI certification accountability requirements, a sufficient level of the members of an entity's governing or managing board or of an advisory board must be accountable to each target market component that's included in the overall approved CDFI certification target market. The generalized CDFI certification cure notice provides the minimum percentages the CDFI fund uses internally to assess if there is sufficient accountability to a particular target market component. Also, um, as noted in the generalized CDFI certification cure notice, um, for credit unions that seek to use the special accountability provision, the credit union must use current fiscal year to date information to demonstrate that at least 50% of its credit union members are part of the specific target market type relevant to any target market component for which the special accountability provision will be used. 
As many of you are aware, the special accountability provision for credit unions allows any member of a credit union's governing board that does not have a conflict of interest to be considered accountable to a target market component for that particular credit union if the governing board is democratically elected by a credit union membership, by, excuse me, by its credit union membership, and if at least 50% of the credit union members are part of the relevant target market type. Other issues that were identified in this generalized, in the generalized CDFI certification cure notices, um, some of them may not have been identified in these notices, but other issues that an entity may need to deal with is in connection with this cure process. Um, there are a handful of entities that, ha that are gonna need to provide information pertaining to CDFI certification requirements, such as um, uh, they, they need to provide proper documentation to verify that changes in their organizing or governance documents have not created CDFI certification compliance issues. Or um, uh, I actually, the other one that I was gonna comment on, I've already commented on, that's where the, the customized inv investment area may or may not be valid, and we just want you to, to, to verify that. But um, if your entity noted any of these other types of changes, um, uh, then it will likely need to address uh, that issue as part of its cure resolution. And uh, many entities noted these types of issues in their ACRs. They were self-identified issues. So now that we've discussed the types of CDFI certification compliance issues that your entity may need to address via this cure process, let's talk about how a pending target market modification request that was previously submitted to resolve identified problems comes into play. As mentioned earlier, entities that receive the cure notice, the, these generalized cure notices, that, um, uh, excuse me, some entities that, had, that received these generalized cure notices had already submitted target market modification requests in an effort to correct the identified compliance issues, but they have not yet received a formal determination from the CDFI fund on the status of those target market modification requests. Many entities that fall into this category receive the generalized CDFI certification cure notice because the CDFI fund has determined that the pending target market modification request will be declined. We apologize because some entities with pending target market modification requests that will actually be approved also received the generalized CDFI certification cure notice, even though that pending target market modification request is accepted by the CDFI fund as resolving the identified CDFI certification compliance issues. Entities um, that got the recent cure notices, um, since, uh, uh, sorry about that, entities that got the, the, the generalized cure notices, even though their target market modification requests are going to be approved, we technically had to send those notices out to you because you are in a cure, um, but, um, but you, you're, you don't really need to take any further action. So at this point, all entities that received a generalized CDFI certification cure notice should by now have also received specific information from the CDFI fund to help them understand if the pending target market modification request will be declined, and if it will be declined, um, uh, you know, what they need to do to move forward with their cure status. So if the pending target market modification request will be denied, it will generally be because of an issue related to one or more of the following. Um, if your entity needs to submit a new target market modification request to resolve its CDFI certification compliance issues, we recommend that you review the general CDFI certification requirements in the blank cure notices for information that may help you avoid uh, the types of issues that resulted in the decline of the previously submitted request. We we'll also uh, recommend that you keep in mind this type of information that I'm about to discuss. So for target market modification requests, please remember the financial product activity and credit union member data presented in the target market modification request must be for the correct review timeframes based on when the target market modification request was submitted. That is, for whatever the entity's actual 
most recently completed fiscal year and current fiscal year to date timeframes are. Those are the timeframes that must be used. So those timeframes must be the most recently completed fiscal year and current fiscal year to date timeframes as of when the target market modification request was submitted. Those are the timeframes that must be used for any information presented in the target market modification request. Please also remember the financial product target market activity levels indicated in the target market modification request cannot be too low um, for an entity be, to be accepted as meeting the CDFI certification target market benchmark requirements. I already mentioned that the CDFI fund can consider uh, making an exception if the um, activity levels fall below the 60% levels, um, but keep in mind that information that I mentioned before where the, the um, activity levels on one side should be at at least 70% um, around that level and the, uh, the missed target market benchmark level should not be below 55%. And again, an explanation needs to be provided um, that the CDFI fund can accept as being a, 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 a reasonable um, uh, situation where a, a, an exception to the 60% target market benchmark requirements should be made. Another thing to keep in mind for target market modification requests uh, that may be pertinent to why your entity's pending target market modification request will be declined, accountability must be adequately and clearly demonstrated to each target market component separately and distinctly. Many credit unions will be able to use the special accountability for credit unions to demonstrate accountability to a target market component. As explained earlier, with the special accountability provision for credit unions, any member of a credit union's governing board that does not have a conflict of interest is considered accountable to a target market component for that particular credit union if the governing board is democratically elected by the credit union membership and if at least 50% of the credit union members are part of the relevant target market type for that particular target market component. If a credit union is using the special accountability provision for credit unions, it must show based on current fiscal year to date data that at least 50% of its credit union members are part of the specific target market type relevant to each target market component for which the special accountability provision is being used. Data reflecting an older or longer than current fiscal year to date timeframe is not acceptable. And the level of the credit union membership that is part of the target market overall is not relevant to the special accountability provision for credit unions. If you're presenting board members as accountable to a target market component via allowed sources of accountability other than the special accountability provision for credit unions, Clear information must be presented to demonstrate why a board member should be accepted as meeting the requirements for that other allowed source of accountability based on a current status or role. Past statuses, including past places of residence, past employment, or past affiliations with different organizations are not relevant to accountability. Please also be aware that a credit union's low income designation status from the NCUA is not relevant to demonstrating accountability to any CDFI certification target market type. The final general issue we suggest that you keep in mind for target market modification requests that may be pertinent to why your entity's pending target market modification request will be declined if that target market modification request is being declined. All proposed target market verification processes must be acceptable. Please be aware that for other targeted populations, the CDFI fund has not so far accepted any proposed target market verification process that involves a geography proxy. You can try to propose one if you want, but so far we have not accepted any of those. So I see that we're at 231. I don't wanna um, uh, cut short the Q&A period. Um, I, I can, um, talk a little bit about how to identify the specific CDFI certification requirements that need to be addressed by your entity, or I was going to, and I was also going to provide some generalized information about how to submit information to resolve the CDFI certification cure status. 
But a lot of that information is information that you can get from the FAQs that the CDFI Fund will be posting on our website. Um, and it might also be information that you were sent in the generalized cure notice. So I think at this point, I'll go ahead and stop doing the overview information in the interest of time and open the floor for questions. If there aren't a lot of questions, then I'll go, go ahead back and I'll continue to present some of this overview information on the subject matter that we weren't able to get to. So Marcy, so far we have about seven questions that have come in. If there was some more information that you wanted to submit, and of course, as I said, seven, of course, a few more come in. Um, if you'd like to go over a couple more things, we can, and then we can go to the Q&A. Okay, that's perfect. Uh, this, the last bit shouldn't take too, too long. I'll, I'll fly through it, actually, if I can. So, um, so we've talked about uh, how to understand the generalized CDFI certification cure notice and the reasons why a pending target market modification request is likely being declined. So now I'll talk a little bit about um, any specific CDFI certification requirements that need to be addressed or how to identify um, the specific CDFI certification requirements that need to be addressed by your entity as part of the cure pro process. So to do this, you can do any of the following. Review the list of CDFI certification issues identified in any blanket generalized CDFI certification cure notice that your entity received from the CDFI fund and assess your entity's status to determine which of those issues are applicable. You can also review any of your entity's submitted annual certification and data collection reports that do not have a completed report status to see what issues your entity might have self-identified. Um, another way to, to kind of verify or figure out what specific issues might apply for your entity, check to see if your organization has submitted a material events form to the CDFI fund. Um, a material event form provides the CDFI fund with information regarding a significant change that has occurred with an entity. Sometimes those changes can impact the CDFI certification. So there might have been issue, an issue that was identified in a material events um, related submission. In addition, as noted in the general CDFI certification cure notice, you can submit a service request to the CDFI fund to re request specific information on the reason why your entity's um, CDFI certification was placed into a cure. As the CDFI fund starts mechanically moving ACRs into cure statuses, you may also receive another notification about the cure with additional information that may be helpful in understanding the, what CDFI certification requirements your entity needs to address. So now, real quick, I'm gonna talk about how to submit information to resolve the CDFI certification cure status. We're in the home stretch here, almost to your, to your questions. Um, so if your entity's most recently submitted ACR shows a cure status, you will be able to attach cure-related information to that ACR and resubmit it. If by the time your entity is ready to send information to the CDFI fund intended to demonstrate its compliance with the CDFI certification requirements, but the most recently submitted ACR has not yet been placed into a cure status, you can submit an AMOS service request with the relevant cure information. If your entity is notified that the most recently submitted ACR is in a cure status, and it has already submitted the needed CDFI certification cure related information via an AMOS service request, what you'll do with that most recently submitted ACR is you'll attach a document to it indicating the number for the related AMOS service request, and then you'll just resubmit that ACR. If your entity will be submitting target market data to show that it can be accepted as meeting the CDFI certification target market benchmark requirements, based on a valid current approved CDFI certification target market. The CDFI fund will soon be providing a target market worksheet for you to complete and submit for review. That worksheet will be posted at our public website. If your entity needs to submit a target market modification request to resolve any issues, um, please go ahead and do that and use an attachment um, to explain when you're submitting your cure related information to explain that the target market modification request has been submitted. If your entity has a pending target market modification request that needs to be declined, 
before it can submit a new target market modification request, please be aware that all target market modification request declines are expected to be completed within the next seven business days. If your entity needs to submit accountability information to affect its cure, the CDFI fund will be providing an accountability worksheet for you to complete and submit for review. Again, that worksheet, like the target market data worksheet, will be posted at our public website. And finally, if your entity needs to submit any other information to affect a cure, you will either do that by attaching the relevant information to the most recently submitted ACR in a cure status, or if the most recently submitted ACR is not in a cure status, by the time your entity is ready to submit its cure-related information, you can submit the cure-related information through an AMOS service request. Now, again, I know all of this information that I just provided, all of this overview information is a mouthful. So if you weren't diligently taking notes, don't worry. As I mentioned earlier, the CDFI fund is gonna be posting FAQs with information to sim similar to all of what we've just been discussing. So um, Catherine and Christy, with that being said, uh, I think we can move on to any questions. Absolutely, we can. So I'm going to ask Ron Good is also working with me with the Q&A. So I'm going to ask Ron if he wouldn't mind reading the first Q&A question to you, Ron. Great, thank you, Catherine. And thank you so much, Marcy, great presentation. So the, the first question is, if you received a cure notice and have submitted corrections, when do you predict that you'll be able to review the corrections to determine whether they are sufficient? If they weren't sufficient, will there, will there be an ongoing exchange to correct them during the pause period, or do we have to wait until April? Ah, uh, so um, the, the, when you submit your cure information, you really wanna be certain that that is the information that needed to cure your issues. So um, we, as I mentioned, we're gonna be posting some FAQs with information that might be helpful um, in understanding exactly what you need to do to affect the cure. So if you've already submitted information and before we posted those FAQs, or if you didn't ask a specific question um, uh, to the CDFI fund about what exactly might be needed for your entity, and you've already submitted information, and it's possible that we might not accept that um, as evidence that your entity is in compliance with the relevant CDFI certification cure, uh, CDFI certification issues, or excuse me, that is, uh, we might not accept that as evidence that your entity is compliant with the relevant CDFI certification requirements. Please notify us. <laughs> that you've already submitted information um, because uh, we'll want to return that to you uh, immediately and not necessarily use that as the cure information. Um, and it will give you an opportunity to reevaluate whether that's actually the information that you want to submit. Um, so you really want to be certain. If you're not certain that what you've already submitted is going to fix your issues, then notify us so that we can basically reset that and allow you to kind of reconsider what you want to submit. Thank you. <clears throat> Our next question is, why do you consider a staff member such as a CEO automatically considered a conflict of interest that can't be counted toward accountability if they are democrat democratically elected to the board and not appointed? Got it. So this question touches on the CDFI funds, um, CDFI certification related, accountability related conflict of interest policy. And for that conflict of interest policy, the CDFI fund says that any um, uh, board member that is employed by um, or has other types of, of um, kind of close connections with the entity that's seeking to obtain or maintain the CDFI certification, that individual cannot be presented as an accountable board member. The reason for that is really about the fact that accountability is intended to ensure that the target market uh, communities are being adequately represented uh, within, the, within the CDFI's sort of decision-making process. And we want to make sure that the, the, the needs and concerns of the target market are being 
seriously taken into consideration as an entity makes decisions about how it's going to engage in its business activities. So we have this conflict of interest policy because if an individual has some sort of close affiliation with the entity, the certified CDFI, or the entity that's seeking to become a certified CDFI, they might have a, a, you know, kind of not really be able to fully represent or best represent the interest of the target market over the interests of the certified CDFI or the entity that's seeking to become certified. So we don't want them to be accountable board members, even if they have other sources of accountability outside of their role with that particular entity that's seeking to obtain or maintain the CDFI certification. We don't want them to be presented as an accountable board member because the nature of their relationship with the entity that's seeking to obtain or maintain the CDFI certification puts them in this position where perhaps they might not always be able to adequately represent the best interests of the target market over the interests of the entity that's seeking to obtain or maintain the CDFI certification. All righty. Thank you, Marcy. So I'm going to I'm going to ask you the next question. Now this is a bit of a mouthful, so I'm going to read it slow. And there's some acronyms in here, Marcy, that I hope you're familiar with. Okay, we'll see. All right. <laughs> yes. here, here's what the credit union says: Our credit union is in the high cost market. We met the unit's threshold, 67 percent, indicative of our service commitment to the LMI communities we serve but fell short on the dollar threshold, 57%, as a result of the disproportionate mortgage refinance volume during the pandemic when mortgage rates were historically low. The unfortunate reality is that our LMI members are underrepresented, underrepresented in a market with a $900,000 median price. Are there any exceptions to the 60% dollar test for CUs in high cost markets? Unfortunately, the exception that we currently make to meeting the 60% target market benchmark requirements involves those, those thresholds that I mentioned earlier in the overview information, where if an entity is not meeting the 60% target market benchmark requirements for both the number and dollar volume of its financial product activity that's directed to its um, current approved target market, um, and uh, for ACR reporting, um, you can take into consideration, as I said before, any PPP transactions that um, may not be target market direct, but were directed to eligible markets. So if you've engaged in PPP activity, then your, ent your entity can use those PPP transactions to perhaps help it meet the target market benchmark requirements, even if those PPP transactions were not actually target market directed but we're at least directed to eligible markets. So unfortunately though, if an entity is not meeting those 60% levels, we're really looking to see that it has a very high level of target market directed activity for either the number or the dollar volume of its financial product transactions. Um, and that, that the, the other dimension, the, the level of activity, target market directed activity on the other dimension does not fall too low. And generally speaking, this is not set in stone, but generally speaking, the CDFI fund has said, in order to make an exception, we want to see that at least 70% of either the number or dollar volume of an entity's financial product activity is being directed to the, um, to the target market. And that on the other side, the dimension where the target market benchmark is being missed, that at least 55% of the activity is target market directed or can be counted as target market directed, again, perhaps including those PPP transactions. So, unfortunately, your entity is just kind of falling below that threshold. So, it is po quite possible that we would not make an exception in that case. And in fact, if that information was presented in an ACR or if a target market modification request was submitted with those target market activity levels, we would have um, uh, said that the ACR needed to be put into a cure and that the target market modification request needed to be declined, even with an explanation, because with the explanation, 
we're saying, okay, the explanation helps us to accept that there's a legitimate reason why the target market benchmarks are being missed, but we still want to see those very high um, activity levels on at least one of those dimensions, either the, the uh, number or dollar volume of the financial product activity that can be counted as target market directed. So that credit union that asked that question, I, I'm sorry, but you actually fall into this sort of slight miss on the exception, and we probably would not make an exception under those circumstances. That was clear, Marcy. Ron is going to give you the next question. Thanks, Ron. So, Marcy, our next question is, we received a blanket cure notice in June and then an email in August saying the CDFI, quote, does not need your entity to submit any other information, unquote. If we are denied, will we have adequate time and information to resubmit by, I'm sorry, to resubmit before September 30th? Um, so, if your entity received an, uh, an email uh, uh, that was sent specifically to your entity saying that it did not need to do anything further to um, affect or to deal with the cure status, that's because the CDFI fund, uh, probably because the CDFI fund reviewed a target market modification request that had been submitted by your entity and found that that target market modification request was going to be approved or was likely going to be approved. Um, and we sent the, the, the cure notice because your entity was technically in a cure or needed to be put into a cure because it had CDFI certification related issues, but then the follow-up email was intended to say, okay, we, we either reviewed a target market modification request that your entity might have submitted or some other information that was available to us, and we've determined that even though we had, you're in a cure or we had to put you into a cure, um, there's no action that you need to take at this time because the information currently available to us is sufficient for us to be able to get you out of that cure. So bank on that email. Um, if, you're, if you're concerned that that email was mistakenly sent to your entity, there might be an error. Maybe there is something that you need to do and we, we got it wrong in sending you that email saying there was no further action that needed to be taken. Send us another <laughs> service request just to confirm saying that you're concerned, you just wanna make sure that there's nothing that your entity needs to do in order to affect a cure. Awesome, okay, so I got the next two questions for you, Marcy. So here's okay. the first one. Um, it says, once a credit union submits their cure in AMIS, how long will it take CDFI to review and approve? And they add a caveat here, they say, ECIP closings are being held up due to this issue. Yep. So um, on uh, ECIP, the ESIP side, I can never remember what ESIP stands for. It's emergency something or other. Um, uh, those ESIP closings are being held up at the request of, of ESIP, um, the ESIP folks. Um, uh, as many of you know, on the CDFI fund side, if an entity is in a cure with their CDFI certification, um, Sometimes uh, award closings might be held up, um, but uh, usually an entity can go ahead and, and receive an award from the CDFI fund, even if it's CDFI certification isn't a cure status. Not always, but sometimes. So um, I actually, at this moment, cannot give you a timeline on that. I apologize for that, because I know that it's, a lot of folks are very anxious to know exactly when these issues are gonna be resolved, but, um, I, we have to wait and see. Um, it really depends on the volume of submissions that we get um, over the next couple of months and exactly what types of things are being submitted by entities to affect their cures. So we really can't um, judge right now or, or estimate exactly how long it might take us to get through all of the information that might be submitted. All right, Marcy, thank you very much. Now here's the next question. So this credit union wants to know what is meant by geography proxy? Oh, sorry, I'm sorry, I should have explained that. So when we talk about a geography proxy, um, we're talking about a situation where for the target market verification process and sometimes, um, well, actually for the target market verification process uh, only, I was gonna add something else there, but 
that's not correct. So for target market verification processes, which are the processes by which an entity determines whether or not a financial product transaction was actually directed to a particular component in its current approved CDFI certification target market. For those processes, sometimes um, entities have been allowed to use um, a, an individual location, even if it's not, and so let me back up. For investment areas, geography is always used to determine whether or not a transaction is investment area directed. So the location of where the transaction um, was directed, that is what's used to determine whether or not a, a financial product transaction was investment area directed. For targeted populations, typically, an entity needs to be able to determine whether or not an individual, a financial product consumer, or in some cases, the end beneficiaries of a financial product transaction, whether those of uh, consumers or the end beneficiaries qualify as being a member of the, of the relevant targeted population. So typically for low income targeted population, an entity needs to check the, um, the consumers or the end beneficiaries income status. And they need to do that directly by checking income documentation for those consumers or for the end beneficiaries. For other targeted populations, which are uh, usually race or ethnicity-based populations, um, entities need to check to see whether the financial product consumer, and we don't allow an end beneficiary process in connection with OTPs right now, um, but so for the OTPs, an entity verifying that a transaction was directed to a particular other targeted population, they need to check to see whether the financial product consumer is a member of the relevant other targeted population. So some entities choose to propose, well, we, um, especially for um, entities that are regulated, uh, financial institutions that are regulated and are kind of discouraged from collecting uh, income or race or ethnic information because it has in the past been used to discriminate against um, uh, consumers. Some of those entities and sometimes other entities that are not able to or are uncomfortable with or are not for some reason, for other reasons, collecting information about an individual's um, income status or their race or ethnic uh, demographic status, they will propose that they'll use that consumer's address or the end beneficiaries for low income targeted populations, they'll use the addresses of those individuals to assess whether or not it's likely that they are either low income or perhaps part of an other targeted population. That's the geography proxy. It's using the individual's location to assess whether census data indicates that a high number of people that live in the area where that individual resides are part of the low income targeted population or are part of a particular other targeted population. And then therefore saying that because a lot of people that, that live in that particular area are low income or part of a particular other targeted population, a particular race or, or ethnic um, demographic, that based on that, the entity is going to assume that the individual that they're dealing with is also either low income or part of the particular other targeted population. Generally speaking, the CDFI fund does not allow these geography proxies in connection with targeted populations. We have allowed some geography proxies in connection with the low income targeted population, but so far we have not approved any target market verification pro uh, processes that involve a geography proxy for other targeted populations. Thank you, Marcy. So before Ron asks you the other two questions, ECIP stands for Emergency Capital Investment Program. Thank you. Just to clear that. You're welcome. Ron? Great, yeah, thank you, Catherine. I needed to know that too. So the next question is, um, is there any updated guide for submitting a target market modification request? I have only found outdated ones. Ah, okay, I'm not sure what's outdated because everything at our 
public website should be up to date. Um, if you need guidance on submitting a target market modification request, as I mentioned before, we provided some general information about the CDFI certification requirements in these generalized cure notices that we've been sending out. So take a look at that generalized information to help you kind of understand some of the things that you'll need to be mindful of as you prepare the target market modification request. But also, um, go ahead and submit in a service request or a help request to the CDFI fund asking for uh, all the current resources that are available to help an entity that's preparing a target market modification request, and we'll send that out to you. If indicate in the um, AMOS service request subject line that the, this particular request is related to a cure status so that it will get priority attention. Um, and, and that's true for any service request being submitted by any entity in a cure status. If you're submitting questions or, or anything like that to the CDFI fund, please mention in the help request subject line that this, is, this question is being asked in connection with a cure status because we'll, we'll prioritize your, your help request. So in addition to, you know, kind of reviewing the information that's in the general cure notices that might help you figure out um, what you need to be mindful of when you're preparing your target market modification request. In addition to perhaps requesting um, a list of target market modification related resources from the CDFI fund via a help request, you can also wait a couple of days and we'll be posting these FAQs at our public website about uh, cure situations, about this cure process. And in that, those FAQs, we're going to be providing information about um, submitting a new target market modification request. So if you hold on a little bit, some of that information will be coming to you via those FAQs as well. Thank you, Marcy. And this is our last question before we close out. And the question is, using 2020, sorry, using 2022 year-to-date loan data, if a credit union can attest that they are currently meeting the 60% target market benchmark thresholds, will this successfully cure the certification status? That depends. So one of the things that um, credit unions, one of the big issues that credit unions have been running into is that many of you have in customized investment areas in your current approved CDFI certification target market um, that is no longer, that you have investment areas that are no longer valid under the new um, census data set that the CDFI fund is currently using to identify distressed areas throughout the country. So if your entity has a customized investment area that was created under an older census data set, likely the 2010 census data set, you need to check to make sure before you decide to try to cure your, um, your issues, your CDFI certification related issues by submitting uh, target market data to show that your entity is currently back in compliance with the 60% target market benchmark requirements. You first wanna check if you have a customized investment area in your current approved CDFI certification target market, check to see if that customized investment area is still valid. If that customized investment area is no longer valid under the current census data that the CDFI fund is using, then you cannot um, uh, do anything other than present a target market modification request in order to cure your CDFI certification target market issues. So if that customized investment area is no longer valid, the only thing that you're going to be able to do is to submit a target market modification request to try to uh, fix the issue. If, however, you don't have a customized investment area in your current approved CDFI certification target market and or you have a customized investment area, but it's valid under the current census data set, then yes, an entity can, um, can uh, fix a target market activity level issue by presenting current fiscal year to date data that shows that it's back in compliance, meeting the 60% target market benchmark requirements or potentially able to, um, to get an exception if it's not too far off from meeting those requirements. 
um, it can submit this uh, current fiscal year to date financial product activity data to show that it can be accepted as being in compliance with the 60% um, target market benchmark requirements as long as that's being done based on a valid set of current approved target market components in the overall CDFI certification target market. So yes, that is an option, but you gotta make sure that your, your current approved CDFI certification target market is, is completely and entirely valid. All components are still valid. And as I mentioned before, we're gonna be providing a worksheet if you are gonna present current fiscal year to date data to show that your entity should be accepted as meeting the target market benchmark requirements. We have a, a particular worksheet that we want you to fill out, and we'll be posting that target market worksheet to our public website soon. Thank you so much, Marcy. We really appreciate that information that you delivered. It was very clear, and I'm sure if we had time, uh, we still have more questions. What we'd like to get you to do, if that's okay, we'd like to send you some of the, these questions that we had remaining, and if you're able to give us some answers, we'd like to post our Q&A also to our LMS along with this particular session so that our credit unions can come back and take a look or listen to what uh, was discussed here. Thank you again so much. Thank you, Christy, for uh, being our host for today. Thank you, Ron, so much for helping with the Q&A. And Franz Ayento, who is our OCIO back office guy, we really appreciate it. Thank you all credit unions for joining us on this call. And we're going to sign out now and we look to see you for our next webinar next month. Take care everyone, have a great afternoon and a wonderful week.